Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another PvP strategy analysis brought to you by Guild Wars 2 Online. Today we're going to be checking out a Necromancer build. This one's all about spreading conditions around and uh, stacking them up on foes very effectively. Uh, it's basically a tournament PvP build but it's great in structured PvP as well. You're going to be racking up a hell of a large number of kills with this build. Uh, you're going to be hitting lots of targets basically and spreading those conditions all over. So it's going to work out really effectively in the structured PvP if you're looking to rank up quickly. Also in tournament games with other teammates who apply conditions effectively this build makes them even more powerful so uh, for the weapon sets we've gone for the scepter dagger in the first weapon set this gives us access to quite a lot of bleeding uh, we've also got some poison in there as well some uh, weakness and also deathly swarm there with a 15 second cooldown uh, unleash an insect swarm blindly multiple foes transfer free conditions to your target on a successful attack a really a powerful ability there indeed for our second weapon set we've gone with the staff. This gives us access to four different marks. The fourth mark being Reaper's Mark. One of the most powerful abilities in the game. This has a 1200 range and can be laid down and cause AoE fear on anyone who triggers it. Really, really effective at uh, bringing down enemies um, and stopping them from getting finishes off or uh, helping your teammates to uh, get a revive and things like that are really helpful in general in those clutch moments when the revive or finisher is so so vital. The other three marks are also fairly effective. This fourth mark is a blast finisher so do bear that in mind if you can get these first two triggered off first uh, it's going to give you a combo field there which you can then trigger with a blast finisher to add uh, weakness into the uh, combination but um in general, these are best laid down on top of a capture point or to um, cause area of denial to the enemies, laying them down in choke points and stuff like that, to force enemies to either waste a dodge by going across them or to trigger them and take the damage. It's up to you, but a really good weapon combination there indeed. As far as our heal goes, we've gone with consume conditions. Feast on conditions, gaining health for each one consumed. So the more conditions on you, the higher this heal is going to be, and it's pretty powerful in its basic form anyway. The utility skills we've gone for are Plague Signet, Epidemic, and Corrupt Boon. Plague Signet transfer all conditions for nearby allies onto yourself so you're going to provide condition removal to your teammates and you can send those conditions out of target follow that with epidemic to spread those conditions then onto enemies all around them in a 600 radius really powerful combination there you can also use corrupt boon to transform all boons on your foe into negative conditions this is really powerful against any guardians using the save yourselves uh, shout that shout basically pulls all conditions from their allies onto themselves but also gives them all the boons and uh, this will be, this ability if you counter it with it is will transfer all all those boons in to uh, conditions they're gonna have a huge condition stack on them as a result of this really really powerful ability and then if you follow that one again up with epidemic you would then spread those to all enemies around them this is why this build is so powerful in this team fights is because of this epidemic the final one we've gone for is Plague. This transforms you and basically gives you stability and a, a select number of um, abilities. So you transformed and we get stability up for a whole 20 seconds as well as these three abilities which basically add um, effects to the Plague. So this one will apply Bleeding to the Plague, this one applies Blindness to the Plague and this one applies Cripple and Weakness. So you can basically use this to keep your enemies CC with Blindness so they can't dish out as much damage or output the amount of damage you're dishing out using the number one ability. A really really powerful skill in general and it also gives you some pretty high um, boost to your HP and stuff like that makes you quite hard to kill so you can uh, stay on point fairly effectively with it as well it also counts as capping the point while you've got that up so in our armor we've gone for the PvP runes of the undead this gives us condition damage and toughness and then transfers 5% of our toughness into condition damage so basically it just transfers it'll give us a lot of condition damage from that setup uh, it's not so good for condition duration but you don't need too much with this build a little bit would help it just depends how you want to set it up I prefer to have the extra bit of damage in there um, PvP PvP staff of leeching, so your next attack with this will steal some health, which is obviously just gives us a little bit more survivability if we want that. Uh, not really any better options really for the staff. The PvP Scepter of Earth gives a 6% chance on critical to inflict bleeding for 5 seconds, and then the Dagger of Corruption giving us plus 10 condition damage each time we kill a foe. It's actually plus 50 condition damage, because in structured PvP you get 50 uh, for every kill you get. For our amulet, we've gone for the Rabbit Amulet, giving us precision, toughness, and condition damage. Uh, as a result of all this, we're going to have 49% critical chance, so we're going to be triggering this 6% um, chance to inflict bleeding fairly often. And we've also got a pretty high amount of uh, condition damage, nearly 1,500, pretty much as high as you can possibly get it. Really, really powerful there. Um, we've also got a fair amount of HP anyway, because the Necromancer is one of the highest HP classes, and a solid amount of toughness as well. Uh, our healing power isn't all that great, but our health in general is pretty solid, and we've got the toughness backing it up, so we're not exactly going to wipe through our health pool too quickly. Um, 
Next up, we're going to take a quick look at our traits. So here we've gone 20, 30, 10, 10. 20 points in spike, giving us gain life whenever you kill something. Signets recharge 20% faster. 5% of power is given as a bonus to healing. And Mark still 10% more damage, buffing up the staff there a little bit and also giving ourselves a little bit of healing. Uh, we don't need any power at all, so it's just a little bit of help there. Signet recharge 20% faster means we're going to be getting that plague signet off a little bit more and helping us uh, get these big condition stacks triggering fairly often. 30 points in curses because it's 60. 60% chance to uh, cause bleeding on critical hits. So this is a great combination with um, obviously our sigil of earth already in that. So we're going to have a really higher number of bleed stacks um, out of triggers. 22% increased bleeding duration. So that's just going to build that up a little bit. Um, gain fury for 5 seconds when entering death shroud. Uh, not too helpful because it's not really going to give us a lot of damage. Um, but obviously a little bit of critting here and there. I think it also does trigger the bleeding even if you are in death shroud. Corruption skills recharge 20% faster, helping both of these. They're both corruption, so it's getting the cooldowns on those very low. 12 second cooldown on the epidemic is absolutely brilliant, really helpful. 2% uh, increased damage for each condition on a foe, so that's going to help us quite a bit. Obviously, this isn't much of a direct damage build in general, but they are going to have quite a lot of conditions on them, so that's going to up our damage quite a bit. And uh, conditions inflicted by scepter skills last 33% longer, so that's going to buff up these uh, bleeds fairly effectively and get them running for quite a time. 10 points in death magic, giving us summon a jagged horror whenever you kill a foe. This is pretty much useless, um, it just gives us a little thing to follow us around, it doesn't really help at all. And lose a condition when you enter death shroud, just giving us a little bit of condition removal there. Uh, can be helpful um, for like uh, countering um, stuns and stuff like that. We can switch into death shroud to give ourselves a bit more survivability. Uh, 10 points in blood magic, gain 5 seconds of regeneration when your health reaches 90%. And dagger skills recharge 15% faster, just getting these being able to be triggered a little bit more often. Um, in general, those last two are things you can mix up and put elsewhere if you felt like you wanted to. Um, you can mix them up and put them into different setups or combine them both into maybe one if you want some more HP and healing or if you want some more toughness and boon duration, you could perhaps go in uh, a little bit deeper into either of these lines. But in general, that's the basic setup. But we're now going to get into a few clips from some matches and uh, break down and analyse what's happening. So in this first encounter, we're on the raid of the Capricorn, and the red team basically been pushed back pretty hard, and we're being pushed back towards the dock and trying to push out and push the blue team back and regain some map control. So here you can see the Rangers laid down a barrage behind me and my teammate here, forcing us to move forward to get out the damage radius of that. Uh, I've also got a large stack of 10 vulnerability on me at the moment as well. Uh, so playing it safe, trying to keep back a little bit and just lay down some conditions onto this Necromancer first. They're a fairly squishy target, but they're enough to be able to handle the conditions so we can spread them if we get the chance. Uh, going for the Epidemic there, and you can see it did trigger on some uh, enemies nearby. Uh, you've got a few of the people around us anyway. You can see those 117s popping up. Uh, that's that bleeding damage triggering around the area. So this warrior's come in and started applying pressure to us and forcing us backwards. Uh, the teammate, the engineer there, trapping them and holding them in place as we're trying to lay down a bit more bleeding on them and stuff like that. They've got a 10 stack of vulnerability, which is going to increase the damage they're taking 10%. I'm uh, just trying to focus him now along with my teammates. You can see we've got two players there rushing back up. That um, Ranger, I believe it is as well, is rushing back up there. This warrior has got endured pain up at the moment, which is going to give them some survivability. Um, but we can counter that because our bleeding still ticks through it. Conditions can still be applied and they will still hurt them even when they have endured pain up. So it's a complete solid counter against that um, uh, trait or boon, depending on how they've got it set up. Uh, heading up one point now, so we've made it past them, we're getting up onto the top, up by where the cannon is. You can see two players going down there for the blue team, so the reds are doing pretty effective and they're playing pretty hard and pushing on towards the uh, blue team side of the map. Here we dominate, and we can see this uh, warrior is trying to fall back. Our uh, engineer is still in front, holding him and trying to keep him trapped. They seem to be pushing back and heading uh, down. To, you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, heading either towards the runes or across the map. But uh, this, we've got this encounter going on here, which is what we're dealing with. Uh, we've got this guardian first of all, who's going to be a pretty of a challenge to rank down in general. You can see he's got a number of signets on, which are going to make him pretty hard to defeat. As those signets make him a lot harder to kill, he gets ten percent damage reduction, uh, condition removal, all different sorts of stats coming in from those, and they're really going to make it a bit tough. Uh, or generally anyway for us to defeat him. Uh, so he's uh, got a hammer as well, you can see he's there, so he's playing a CC build, fairly supportive, uh, so generally he's going to be built with a lot of HP, and we're going to have to counter this. It's not, in general, this will be a very difficult build to bring down, is what I'm trying to say. Um, 
it's not an easy one to counter. We've, we've done Guardian ones before on this channel. You see how strong they are. They can be one of those powerful uh, setups in the game. But you can see here he's trying to attack one of our teammates. We're holding back and just applying pressure. And he's got a good stack of conditions on him there. He's just you've saved yourself, which has given him um, all those boons you've just seen appear on the left-hand side of his bar. So he's got a fair number of conditions and all those boons. Um, we've got a solid counter this, though. We've got corrupt boons. So... For some reason here we trigger Epidemic, which is a total waste, um, shouldn't really have used it here at all. But uh, we also trigger Corrupt Boon, you can see this is now going to turn all those boons instantly into uh, conditions. And now you can see he's taking a hell of a lot of damage, he's got Burning on him, Blindness, Crippled, a uh, good stack of Bleeding, Poison, Weakness. It's all going downhill for him now, and he's going to get spiked down very quickly and are easily defeated by the rest of my teammates. So really good play there. The, the downside was wasting Epidemic, but Epidemic's on such a short cooldown, it doesn't matter too much uh, that it was wasted there. Uh, it probably would have better to hold on to it, of course, but uh, it wasn't too much of a problem. You can see we've just come back up, and it's already pretty much off cooldown anyway as we get into the next encounter. It's pretty much always there when you want it. It's very rarely ever down uh, when the opportunity arises, at least. Uh, pushing back against this uh, warrior again, they've got Endure Pain coming up again, but uh, we're still able to deal with some damage through that and apply those bleeding stacks, doing that 117 there, you can see ticking up over his head and just hurting him as we move on. And the bread team now have made a good, solid, steady push, uh, they haven't really lost anybody, we made a solid move across the map, the uh, ruins are still contested, the... Um Dockyard still held, and we're going to get onto the beach and make a good cap on that. So this next encounter, we're on the uh, Battle of Kylo, and it's right at the start of the match, and we're just securing this point. You can see we've already got three marks laid down on point, and then I'm laying down the uh, fourth mark there just to set it up as some uh, area of denial. Basically, I knew this warrior was coming closer, and he was heading in this direction, and I wanted to secure the cap on this point because he obviously wants to get on point and stop us capping as quickly as possible. Warriors are very mobile professions, so we need to stop him and just give ourselves just that extra second to cap the point so he comes up gets fear bombed and pushed back and you can see he starts to come in closer but uh, we are going to secure the cap on that before he gets on land we managed to just scare him off a little bit that fear and naturally does work it also you can see it there triggered his balanced stance uh, uh, trait which basically there you see he's got stability boon up that's because he's got the balanced stance trait and that's not going to trigger for another 90 seconds and it's pretty much worn off before he's even got into combat so there's a pretty solid use there of that fear to basically just completely counter out one of his key defensive traits and also to uh, give ourselves a bit of a time to cap that point. So you can see uh, we're alongside this Mesmer and we're stacking up a huge stack of bleeds on this warrior. He's up to 15, 16 stacks. This is when you really want to trigger Epidemic. Unfortunately, his warrior teammate is too far away. He's coming closer. We even hit 19 stacks just a moment ago. He's got taken some pretty high damage. His teammate's coming in a little bit closer here. As they cross over, we go for the triggering epidemic. We also went for the uh, trying to launch a load of boons at him. Unfortunately, we didn't really have many. Uh, there's only five bleed sacks left on him as we trigger it. Uh, yet, yeah, the teammate actually did take the bleed sacks as well. So both of them are being ticked away. Unfortunately, it was down to only about five there. So it didn't help us too much. Again, wasting corrupt boon there. He didn't really actually have any boons on him. I think we were just trying to hopefully get a little bit of damage out. But um, he didn't actually put any boons up to try and help himself get away. In case he put up like... um. A speed boost or something like that. So here we sw switched into the staff. Uh, the intention with this is to get the number five there and lay that down on the warrior. Unfortunately, it's still on cooldown because we used it initially. So this is the downside, of course, of using that to begin with. Um, it's now it might cause us some problems in finishing off this player. It does look like our teammates are going to manage to finish off him off before it does cause us any problems. And there we go, there was the finishing blow, they got that in. Uh, we're coming down anyway, I'm not sure if we entirely realised that the uh, kill had been made, because we're coming in here and they're going for the fear bomb, uh, just to try and make sure we're ke uh, keeping him from doing any damage. And also it was a solid counter against his uh, the whirling blade ability there, the number 5 on the axe, which is actually some pretty high damage and would have uh, caused some problems for my teammates down there. But yeah, we jumped in there and stopped that from happening with the fear bomb, so good use of abilities there. So this next encounter is a uh, 1v1 against a uh, elementalist. So you can see again here we've laid down our three marks on the counter points. So they're going to trigger those if they try to get on point. And we've laid down our fourth mark, the uh, fear mark, inside of that choke point. So they can no longer use that choke point, forcing them up the staircase if they want to. And basically forcing them back, you can see that they've retreated. Uh, unfortunately for us, they've got this bouncing lighting ability, which is dealing out some damage. And we're going to be... Uh, stacked up with some vulnerability from that but they can't come in closer without either wasting a dodge and jumping over that mark or um, triggering it themselves 
It does look like they are going to run across very, very close there again. Uh, they're basically just trying to lure us out, trying to ask, get us off the point, but we're staying on point and staying focused on what our job is. And there we go, there's the fear bomb uh, pushing them back and uh, giving us the full chance to cap the point. They obviously decided to try and rush in at that moment, didn't notice, hadn't noticed them out for some reason and uh, got caught by that. Um, now here would be a good moment to use our Corrupt Boon, they've got Frenzy up, sorry, our Fury up at the moment which is going to give them 20% more critical chance, they've also got a Might Sack on there as well, this would be a good chance to use that really, I don't think we actually do, which is a bit of a shame, we're missing out on uh, some extra damage there, using our Heal, uh, getting rid of the conditions, the vulnerability stack they got on us there, and switching into our Death Shroud here, Fear Bombing them away, just trying to defend this point. Number one ability there, there's number two jumping in. We're going to come back out of the Death Shroud there, we're getting knocked out of that. Force back as well by the Elementus. Another downside of this build is there isn't a huge amount of stability, only in the play form can you really find any. We're up to eight stacks of bleeding on that, we're just whittling there. You can see our HP is just staying up fairly well, we're ten seconds off our heal as they go down. Um, so yeah, just playing it safe really there, we wasn't really taking any risks. Uh, not using our big abilities or anything, not putting anything on a huge cooldown that would cause us any particularly big problems, but just winning an easy 1v1 there. So you can see this build is still viable in 1v1, even though it is designed for those team fights. Of course, it was against an elementalist for running a fairly squishy build, uh, so we did manage to bring that fairly quickly. Obviously, if you're fighting someone with a large amount of condition removal, it can cause you problems. So we're pretty much coming to the end of the show now, and I just wanted to say I know I'm not very good at the Necromancer. It's not one of my strongest professions at all. I just wanted to give it some coverage, because some people had asked, and I hadn't done it yet, and I felt I wasn't doing it justice. It is a great profession, and I did really enjoy this build. It's just not something I would say I really specialise at at all. Um, but we've got some interesting news coming up for you. For the next four weeks, starting next Monday, we're going to have one week looking at each of the different roles in PvP, roaming, near point control, midpoint control and far point attack. These are the four PvP roles and if you're looking to PvP you should be picking one of these and working out builds for it. So we're going to have a look at each of these in tips and tactics, we're going to break down how it all works and stuff like that and how to fit one of these roles, what you need to be doing and what you need to have in your build to fit the role and then we're going to have some strategy analysis videos as well looking at combat and stuff like that from a specific build that I really enjoy and I play within that role. Keep an eye out for that in the next few coming weeks. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, blah, blah, blah. Thank you very much.